And I'm Brian Doyle. Great to be with you. Thanks for joining us. Uh, we have uh, Rex Tignor, Thomas McMillan, and a special guest, Rod Hanley. Rod's a personal friend for many years, spoken at many ISI conferences. Uh, years ago, a couple of decades ago, probably a better part of 25 years ago, he started a ministry that God burdened him with, and it's called Character That Counts. And his focus is on getting men in relationship with one another, discipling, following Jesus, spurring one another on. And Proverbs 27, 17 really resonates with Rod and with many guys. So Rod, great to have you. You're based out of Lee Summit, which uh, I'm based out of a good part of the time. So uh, great to be with you today. And thanks for joining us. You're welcome. Okay, so Rod, what we're talking about... Um, the reason we're talking about this today is that you know grow, growing in Christ as a man isn't just about going to church and being in a Bible study and content and having a quiet time, which, by the way, are all good things. Please do them all. But it's about brotherhood, a certain type of brotherhood that I think a lot of men, well, my experience for myself is I kind of grew out of it. I had it in my 20s, mm. and I kind of grew out of it because I got married and had children, five of them, and had a job and a mortgage and all that kind of stuff. And I kind of grew out of some of that kind of relationships with other brothers in Christ. And they didn't really have the encouragement and I didn't have the accountability. So tell us a little bit about, as we ramp up this, how God burdened you with a ministry that's helping men focus on encouragement and accountability. Hmm. Well, I was proclaiming Christ uh, publicly, but privately I was living a totally different uh, mindset. And, and the question that really drove me to accountability was something that I woke up in the morning thinking, uh, thinking this thought, will today be the day people find out who I really am? Mm -hmm. uh, I was uh, a phony, a hypocrite, a fraud. I mean, I was an imposter proclaiming Jesus publicly. I was the chaplain of the Seattle Supersonics. I was on staff with the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. I was discipling guys, leading people to Christ, doing all these things. But privately, I was I was involved in some, some pornography and other things that were not uh, God-glorifying. And I was, I was uh, you talk about being discouraged. I was, I was really discouraged. Because I, I just felt like I was fighting a losing battle, you know, with, with yeah. myself. And so my entry point to accountability was simply the, the realization that I, 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 need, I need people to help me fulfill Proverbs 27, 17 as iron sharpens irons. And so I, out, of a, out of a really broken spirit is when mm -hmm. I engaged this. And, and I discovered that, uh, you know, the word of God, I can summarize the word of God into, into one word. It's the word relationship. It's about a vertical mm -hmm. relationship with God, about horizontal relationships with other people. And I had, the, had this relationship in order, but I didn't have this, and, and, and it wasn't working for me. So that's, that's, that's how it all began. Yeah. You know, I mean, you're sharing your story. I mean, we've all got stories. I mean, that's, that's kind of, and I appreciate you sharing your story. Because that's a real first step toward getting to we really have some meaningful relationships. I did the same thing. I was struggling with losing my temper. Early 2000s, five kids in seven years, kind of, you know, all of a sudden it just became a little overwhelming. I'd raise my voice. I didn't want to raise my voice. So, you know, I tried not to raise my voice, but I did raise my voice. I looked up verses on anger. It didn't help. Finally, I had a couple guys who came alongside me, spoke into my life graciously, yet clearly, and they did this. I, I'm looking at James 5, 16. They began to pray for me, pray yes. with me, but pray for me. They would take me to the throne of grace daily and ask God to do what only God can do, which is bring healing into my life. I needed those guys. I needed their encouragement. Uh, they weren't critical. They weren't just asking me questions. They were really my cheerleaders yes. and prayer warriors. Yep. So I always ask guys, do you have cheer personal cheerleaders? Do you have personal prayer warriors? And honestly, we all know the answer to most of this. And most guys do not have that. So we want to talk about how to get guys into a place where they have personal cheerleaders, personal prayer warriors. So Rex, uh, what, what do you think about that? Thomas, what's... What do you yeah, think? I, I mean, I, I think you've definitely got to have the guys. And one of the questions I wanted to ask Rod is, is when he was in that moment, what were some of the qualities of guys you were looking for? 
Well, I knew they would, would be perfect. I knew they were going to be just like me, flawed men. I was just looking for people that'd be real and genuine and honest and vulnerable and, and be willing to, you know, expose uh, truth and do it in a loving way, you know, and that's where the encouragement comes is because it's not there to beat you up. It's not there to judge. It's not there to condemn you and, and, and make, and, you know, and, and push you further into that area of yeah. temptation or sin to say, Hey brother, you're better than this. And I believe in you and I'm for you. And, and I want to pray for you and encourage you because, uh, you know, if you're, if you can win this battle, uh, guess what? Your family wins, your church wins, your community wins, your job, everybody wins. And so that, that was, that was what really, really, uh, was the motivation to say, okay, I'm going to come clean. I'm going to get honest. Right. I, I tell people uh, accountability is real simple. It's honest with God, honest with others, honest with yourself. Yeah. And, and being honest with yourself is is the first step in recognition. Yeah. Boy, I I got I got issues. And guess what? All of us have issues. Yeah. <laughs> May not be the same issue, but we all can understand. I've been there and done that. And 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 yeah, I believe in you too. And you believe in me. Let's go, let's go. Let's let's win in together. So so what I'm hearing is that you don't you didn't surround yourself with people that told you what you wanted to hear. It works better that way. <laughs> a yes, a yes, person is not good. No, now, this is this is not about sin management, yeah. which right. is what that is. Okay, you know, sin, trying to, you know, hey, okay, you sin, oh, yeah, yeah, that's all good. That well, that's sin, that's not that bad. You know, yeah, well, no, it's about it's about calling it out, yes. calling what it is, being real, and then and then saying, hey, let's let's go, let's go a better route. Absolutely. So, Rod, your, your your testimony, I think, is pretty similar to most men, to many men, in that we kind of get born again twice. <laughs> it's easy to recognize our need for a Savior, but it's not quite as easy to recognize our need for a Lord. So we, that's the point that we all, I, I think we can all relate to that. Uh, we, I, I know for me, a moment happened in front yeah. of a produce store in Wallingford, Connecticut, when I got to the end of myself. Uh, after being saved for 15 years. So my question was, my question is though, when I, when I did realize that, the process that God took me through was he brought certain types of men into my life who seemed to have the same MO. And I'm curious to know, did you find the same types of men? Because these are the men that we should strive to be. Did you find certain qualities in those men uh, that really spoke to you and kind of got you on the path that God had for you? Were the qualities that really kind of stood out to you? Yeah, and it, they, I did. Uh, but you know what? Ages don't matter. Uh, skin color doesn't matter. Uh, it's their heart. It's, that's what you're looking for, the heart. A teaching right. heart, a faithful heart, somebody who says, you know, well, I want to I want to get better. I want to grow in my relationship with the Lord. And so that that's the common theme that really yeah. draws you together. And I remember uh, I started doing this 30 years ago. So I've been, I've been in this a long, long, long time. Uh, that first group included a former Jehovah Witness, uh, uh, one guy that grew up uh, in India, another guy that was uh, a lot younger than me, so, uh, people, old. I mean, but and some were married, some were, you know, it, we, we didn't all look the same. We all had the same heartbeat that we wanted to, to grow in Christ together and, uh, awesome. and, and uh, you know, pull back the pull back the, the shade and be be real. And where I'll beat you to the punch. I know you're going to ask me about this banana. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, yeah. I don't want to crush this banana here in front of my, you know, as I start getting excited, but, but I, I tell men all the time, it says the banana pull from the bunch is the one that gets peeled. Mm -hmm. Think about it. When a, a banana, when it's connected to a group of fellow bananas in the tree, he's safe. Gets mm -hmm. taken out of the, of the tree. He's there's still safety in numbers at the local grocery store, but the instant that banana gets ripped away from his buddies, guess what? He's in trouble. Yeah. And so my strategy with men is stay connected to the bunch, the right yes. bunch. Right. You, know, you know, and that and that and that to me it just speaks volumes. That's exactly what we're doing. We're, yeah. we're finding a, a place where we can grow together and be honest with others, God, and ourselves. You know, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I was I forgot where I saw you do that at, and 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 I mean it was like a light bulb that went off in my head, and and it's just something now that you know I, I learned copyright means copyright, <laughs> you know. So, you know, I, I just, I tell guys sometimes, you know, you, you got to stay connected, yeah. mm -hmm. even though it's yeah. tough, even though, even though your, your junk is getting out there and stuff like that, mm -hmm. 
you got to stay connected because at the end, it'll all be worth it. Well, it, it is risky. I mean, I mean, I think we'd be wrong not to say there there is an element of risk when you put, like you said, Rick, when you put yourself out there, yeah. it's risky. And for most of us that in our season of life, we've been burned by that risk. Someone's been burned us, if not multiple times. And yet the male tendency, at least the American male Christian man, uh, tends to want to just work harder at their yes. sin or work harder, whether it's, especially if it's an area that includes some level of shame, lust, anger, you know, greed, finance, stuff that just we feel like, I don't really want to talk about this. And honestly, you can be in a small group, a mixed group with your wife, if you're married, with your church, you can be in that all day long. You're never going to bring it up in that group. It's just not going to happen. So if you're a pastor or a leader, you're thinking, well, we've got a strong small group ministry. Not so fast. Mm -hmm. Because how are the guys doing in that ministry? And who are they really talking to about the difficult things in their life? Well, here's what uh, God says in his word in Hebrews. He says, see to it, brothers. So there's some element. you got to get the men connected. See to it, brothers, that none of you has a sinful, unbelieving heart that turns away from the living God, but rather encourage one another daily, as long as it's called today, so you won't be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. It's just deceitful sin. It's calling our name. We think it's not a big deal. Oh, no one's getting hurt. Well, actually, all kinds of bad stuff has happened. It's deceitful, and we need brothers that are doing life with us, who can what? Who can encourage us. There are cheerleaders, encourage us. Part of the encouragement is the vulnerability, the, you know, the honesty, the openness, the locking arms, doing life together, praying for one another, being a banana in that bunch. And that's Hebrews 3.13. And, and guess what, Brian? I have over a hundred different scripture verses. That doesn't have the word accountability in it, but it's all about accountability. I mean, let me just give you a couple. Uh, Proverbs 11, 14, where there's no guidance, the people fall. Yep. But in abundance of counselors, there's victory. Yep. You know, victorious guys. How about this one? Proverbs 9, 8, and 9 says, Reprove a wise man and he will love you. Give instruction to a wise man, he'll still be wiser. Teach a righteous man, he will increase his learning. I mean, that talk about growing up. And then, and then how about this one? This one challenges all of us. Proverbs 12, 1. Whoever loves discipline loves knowledge, but he who hates reproof is stupid. <laughs> We're not smart when we when we say, you know, what? I think I think I can do this on my own. I think I'm I, I can go solo. I can be a lone ranger. I can I can somehow manage my sin and play this double life and 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 and, and try to you know play the Christian life. Guess what? It will end up biting you at the worst possible moment. Yeah. You, and it will destroy yeah. you. And and uh, if you want to if you want to avoid being destroyed as a man, link up with brothers. Now I want to tell you something. The word accountability scares guys to death. Yeah. And it should because the dictionary definition says reporting, explaining, and justify your life to somebody else. And I don't know any guy. Well, I want to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sign me up to to, to share my confess all my yeah. sins and all my faults and all my regrets. But you know what? That's not the approach you use. You, the approach you use is I'm gonna I'm gonna bless and encourage and pray for my brother. Right. And if I self-disclose, yeah. guess what? What happens is you end up getting free from that. That's yeah. right. And, and while uh, you know, 20, 30 years ago to tell people I got a porn problem, I mean, I'd rather not go there. And guess what? I don't have any problem sharing that now because I'm free from it. Mm -hmm. Free from it. That's, that's right. Not who I am. That's not that's not who I am anymore. And guys, it brought deliverance. Now, does that mean I'm delivered for, for the rest of my uh, uh, earthly days? Yes and no. Yes, in the long term, I am. But i got to fight that battle every day. And that means mm -hmm. I am with brothers every day. I don't, I don't get in situations where I'm running solo again. Right. I'm capable of no. going down a devious path if I don't have constant yeah. encouragement. And you know, Rod, on your website, uh, I know it used to be there on Character That Counts. You've got a list of accountability questions. It's a pretty extensive list. 
and give give us a couple of them that you have seen that's really effective when when you're sitting down talking to a guy just give us a couple ideas of what that may look like well and they are there there's actually men questions women questions team questions couples questions so and, and, and they're there as a starter, really, is what they are, is to prompt you to discover what are the questions I need to be answering. So I, I don't tell people this is not the magic set of lists, but this is these are starting points to begin to have real conversations. Because here's the reality. If you do not have some set questions that you know you're going to be uh, answering, you'll revert back to very casual conversations centered primarily around news, sports, and weather. That's where guys go. Amen. I mean, they just, and, and so you need this. And so question one on our, on all of our questions talks about how, how am I doing with Jesus? You know, has, my time in the, with my time, my time praying, my time memorizing scripture, my time in my local church. What does that look like? What, what does it look like? Not 20 years ago, but this week, what's it look like right now? My time with Jesus. And I've discovered over the years, however, that question's answered is a pretty good leading indicator to the rest of the answers on these questions. Yep. There's a purity question. There's a financial dealing question. There's a relational question. There's how I'm doing at my work, uh, you know, my exercise, my daily routine. Those are some of the questions. But my favorite question is question 10. And here's the, here's the question. Have you lied on any of your answers today? <laughs> yeah, well, and that's, that's the catch-all. Because you know if you've been honest. And if you're not going to be honest with these guys that you've invited into your life, then here's my suggestion. Don't yeah. do your ability. You're wasting your time. You're wasting their time. Yeah. Yeah. So. That's yeah, good. You know, the uh, and uh, we get a fair amount of calls. Let's talk about uh, hard areas for the 21st century man, uh, whatever your age is. So we've already talked about a few of them. You know, money, anger, porn, loss, those kind of things. Uh, sometimes I get calls and it'll be from a, some a staff person saying, well, we have a guy who's struggling with this. And I'll mm -hmm. be like, you have a guy? <laughs> Is there anybody else? Well, I don't know. Uh, uh, this guy, I go, you know, somehow we've got to tie this idea of encouragement and accountability and bring it into the ministry of the local church getting men connected to one another so they're not living life you know on a superficial place where they're how you doing how's it going how's your week fine how are you i'm fine high five high five see you click them in we've got to get past that so really character that counts accountability is not just asking questions it's becoming friends yes. genuine friends because that's the kind of guy i'm going to open up to I'm not opening up to someone who's not my friend. You know, we do things like who's got your back. If you, if I'm not confident that a man's got my back, he's, he's practicing confidentiality, he's in my corner, whatever the catchphrase is, if he's not my friend, then I'm sorry. I'm, not, I'm sharing very little with them. And I honestly, I think there's an appropriate caution to that. So part of this is getting men connected, building relationships, building friendships, accountability that works, I think, comes from friendship. What have you seen along those lines, Rod? Well, and I've seen people try to randomly throw guys together, and it really doesn't work for the long haul. Mm. Uh, I mean, really, uh, some of the best candidates for you to do this with might be someone who you have history with, that you uh, love, love to play golf with, you love to fish with, and you can get real and raw and honest with them. And and uh, and then here, here, here's the truth. Some of the best people to not do it with would be your best friends, simply because of the history. So it's, 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 it's just saying, Lord, who do you have for me? Who can I bless and who can bless me? Who can right. be a good teller in my life and I can reciprocate with them? And and, I, and I'm a believer that the, the number four or five is actually the best number to have. Because if it's just a one-on-one, -on -one, it can turn into a yes-man deal. Yeah. Yeah. But when there's when there's multiple guys, you know, a foursome, a fivesome that is getting together, and, and, you, and you say, we're going to do this we weekly, because a lot happens in a week. <laughs> a lot. Yeah. A lot happens in a week. And we're going to make this a priority, and we're going to – we're going to – 
we're going to, you know, uh, carve out the necessary time and we're not going to waste time with sports news and weather conversations, be superficial. We're going to get down to the the issues that, that are really burning in our heart, you know, and, and, you know, if you want to just simplify this down, Hey, what's, what's my greatest win this week? And what's my greatest loss this week? Mm-hmm. Let's, let's go. Let's deal with that. And then that may take an hour right there with right. answering that question. Yep. And, and how can I pray for it? How can we, how can we help make sure next week you're not giving the same report? How can we create wins? And that's what I love about some of our early days of this accountability group. We would be excited to come back the next week because guess what? We finally won. <laughs> we finally, you know, mm-hmm. at that moment of crisis, that moment of temptation, we did walk away. We did, you know, uh, you know, do something that that was different than, than our normal pattern had been historically. So mm-hmm. you talk about encouraging, man. And, and for me to get up at oh dark 30 <laughs> once a week. I got to be encouraged. You know, I want to come and bring a report that I did better. You got, you got your prayers are working here. You know, with the uh, technology, it can be a curse. It can be a blessing. I'm just going to say, this is an area where it can be a blessing. And so I affirm the weekly group. I got a Monday group, weekly group. Yes. The weekly group. We've talked about entry points in uh, men's ministry, you know, entry points, really the goal of entry points is to get men, into some type of group like this. But even the group, it's still once a week. Again, I go back to Hebrews 3.13, encourage one another daily as long as it's called today so you won't be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. I think that group is still a platform for deeper friendship. And we can use simple tools like this, calling, texting, contacting, visiting, have a lunch, so that we're, again, building friendships I know as a man, I had these friendships as a younger guy in my 20s. And all those things happened in my 30s. And then all of a sudden in my 40s, like you, Rod, I'm in ministry. But I'm looking around and Proverbs 18, 24 says, a man of many companions, which I had, by the way, many Mm -hmm. companions, may come to ruin. But there's a friend who sticks closer than a brother. I had the companions. I checked that box. But the box that I did not check was the second part of Proverbs 18.24. I no longer had what I had in my 20s. I did not have a, never mind friends. I did not have a friend <laughs> who sticks closer than a brother. When you get right down to why are men of God who attend Bible teaching evangelical churches with great ministries, why are we not aggressively growing? I think it comes out to we don't have a friend. We need friends that we lock arms with, live life with, encouragement, accountability. And so that's, you know, how, how, how do you see the church doing in this? How is the local church receiving your message? Because this is your niche. This is, your, this is what you champion. When you come to our conference, you don't talk about all the other stuff. You talk about this. How is it being received? Churches that embrace it are doing really, really well, but most churches are scared to death to do it. And the, and the leader of that, the leader of that, and the one that's uh, holding the reins is usually the senior pastor who is friendless. <laughs> he doesn't have a friend, you know. And now all of a sudden, I'm going to have to do practice what this guy. And so a lot of, a lot of they don't they don't like me coming in because I'm going to pastor is going to have to get real too. And, and, and guess what? The churches I see that are thriving and Brian, you and I are part of a wonderful church. Our, our pastor is very raw and very real. And that doesn't repel people from our church. It actually draws people to him because he's being honest. Yeah. Being honest with what's going on. And so he has many friends, many comrades, but he also has, has some very specific friends who are holding him to the fire in a very positive way, not a condemning way, not a judging way, but, but a very God glorifying way. So yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm with you a thousand percent on that, Brian, just see it, see it. And, and, and churches that actually bring me in. In fact, I booked a church this morning from Meridian, uh, in the, uh, Meridian, Idaho, that's having me come in in January to do their men's conference. And they said, we want you to talk about your sweet spot accountability. That's what our men need. And so they, they, I've got a clear path, and it'll be a great weekend with with some men 
Yeah, and I can't wait. I can't wait. It's 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 fun. It's fun to do. I do about uh, well before COVID, did about thirty a year. Thirty churches a year would use me on the weekends, and I would do that. Uh, as you know, things changed dramatically when right. the pandemic hit, and we're and we still haven't hit our stride back from that. But but Lord willing, we will. Well, I know that the guys that are watching, listening to us today, they're all over the place. Some of many of us have had these relationships. But maybe we don't have them now. So let's pray, Lord. I pray uh, for every one of us, myself included, mm -hmm. Rex and Thomas and Rod and every guy that's viewed or joined us in some way in this podcast, that you would grant us the great favor of a friend who sticks closer than a brother. Mm -hmm. Of a couple of guys who are true friends, who will encourage us and build us up, who will hold our feet to the fire, and we can do the same with them. So we need your help with that. Give us brothers the way you intended. So please hear our prayer now. We trust you for this. And thank you for our time together. In Jesus' name. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Rod. Yeah. Bless Thanks, you. Rod. Good to see you. Good.